Many people are surprised to hear that terms like eternal torment or eternal separation from God are never found in the Bible. The individual words are found in the Bible, but they are never found together in those phrases. Those phrases were constructed by people who teach that God will torture people in hell with no rest forever and ever. The Bible is clear that hell is a place of punishment, but it is also clear that this punishment will end in death. Oh, yeah. Jesus' disciple John called it the second death. And nowhere else in scripture is this word death, thanatos in the original Greek, used to mean anything other than the end of life and consciousness. How's my toasty goats? But many Bible teachers have insisted that in this one use of this word in the entire Bible, it actually means unbearable torment in flames without end or rest. So according to the traditional view of hell, the word death always means death, except in reference to hell, where it actually means living forever. I almost lost my faith over this teaching until I studied the original meaning of words like death, destruction, and perish for myself. It took me over a year because each new answer led to another question. Eventually, I studied the original meaning of every word and phrase that was used in the Bible to describe hell. I found that while some of these terms might sound like everlasting torment in 21st century English, they meant something quite different when they were used in other passages in the Bible. This deep dive led me to a much different understanding of how hell works, one that allows me to love God as much as I fear him, a belief that makes me think that God is offended by the idea of everlasting torment, maybe even angered. As I studied every passage that talks about God's punishment, I was surprised and relieved to find that in all the examples of God's justice in the Bible, the harshest punishment he ever exacts is 2x for the most intentional evil people chose to do in this life. But despite all of this, a lot of Christians have been taught that if a child steals a chocolate bar and then gets hit by a bus, God will subject them to the non-stop unbearable flames of hell for the rest of forever. I burnt my finger recently. That was extremely painful, but it was just my finger and the pain only lasted a few minutes. Christians have been asked to accept that the punishment of rejecting God's offer of forgiveness is that same level of pain on their entire soul, non-stop, forever, and ever, and ever, give or take a few trillion years. Sorry, no. We need to read our Bibles much more carefully before we pin that kind of injustice on God. God says to his people in the Old Testament that because of you, the people of the world profane my name. I think this is one of those issues that causes many people to turn away from God, because why would they want to know and love a God like that? So I hope you will consider this explanation about what the Bible might actually say about hell. A more technical summary is in the description. The condensed version goes like this. God's justice towards those who don't accept or want his offer of forgiveness is only and exactly what they deserve. It happens after they die physically and before what the Bible calls the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, the Bible says that the souls of these people, which are held in two places referred to as death and Hades, will go into the lake of fire where they will experience what the Bible calls the second death. That's it, clearly described in scripture, just punishment before the day of judgment, followed by the second death of the human soul.
The Bible says that God is a God of justice, and it says that the wages of our sin is death. This is why Jesus chose to die in our place, so God's justice could be served by his death without us paying that price ourselves. But Jesus didn't have to burn in hell forever to pay the price for our sins. God applies 100% complete payment for every sin, for every one, who will turn to him and accept the payment of these wages by his death. Jesus Thanatos on the cross, so we don't have to experience the Thanatos of our soul. So from everything he tells us about himself in scripture, I can't help but wonder if God's response to the everlasting torment belief would be, I gave you plenty of examples of my justice in the Bible, and the worst punishment I ever exact for anyone was still only twice what they had done to others. So how can you even think that I would do such a thing as to send people to burn in hell without rest for the rest of forever?